In this video, I'm going to walk you through the basics of the ElectroServer 5 admin. I've got ElectroServer 5.0.1 installed here, and uh, in this, uh, th this is the installation directory, and there's an admin folder in this directory. If you go in this admin folder, you'll see a web admin directory and a .air file. The web admin directory contains a web version of the admin. So it can be launched, it could be de deployed to a website and, and played through um, an HTML page. The .air extension is, this is a, an Air Adobe integrated runtime of uh, the application. So you'll need, in, in order to install this, you'll need uh, the Air runtime installed. So to install this, just double click it once you have the Air runtime installed. And you can uh, you can just go through the normal installation process. I already have it installed, so it tells me that here. And so I'm just going to click the Run Now button. Uh, this application, since it's already installed, I could just launch it through the Start menu. I'm on Windows, and it's installed as an application called ES5 Admin. So I just find it under ES5 Admin in in the programs. On, this is the main the the introduction screen when you launch the admin, and on this screen you'll see all the servers that you currently have configured on the left. Uh, when you, by default, when you first install it, you'll only see lo local host here, and maybe that's all you'll ever need. Um, but for me, I've got uh, another server, a remote server, that I can uh, admin from the same one here. So I could click on either one of these and edit the connection information and then connect to that server and, and admin it. So I have I already have Electra server running locally here, as you can see. Um, and so I'm going to log into that one. So I click on localhost and I can, I can edit the login information by clicking edit here. Um, the default connection, or the default username and password for a fresh install are ad administrator and password. So you can use that to log in. Once you've logged in, you'll see this uh, main menu screen here. <clears throat> and from it, you can access six different main areas um, of, of the admin and we'll look at each one of them pretty briefly. Uh, but before we move on to the first one, just showing you uh, the rest of this screen here. So you can access the, the six areas through the tabs up here or through the icons down here. The, the icons have a little bit of information about what each tab would contain. Also on the right, there's a few statistics about the server that's that's currently running. Uh, I've only had this one running for seven minutes and twelve seconds, and uh, but if if it was running for hours or days or months, you would see that here. It also shows you CPU usage and um, number of megs of memory used and the number of users that are logged in. I currently have a, a chat application and a game running. I can just show you for a moment here. This game is running and connected to Electra Server. And so that user is showing up here. <clears throat> and there is a chat. I have a chat running. So you can see that there are two users uh, logged in. So let's look at the server monitoring screen. On this screen, uh, you can gain access to information about the server that's currently running um, runtime information. So while the rest of the screens are all about managing the server, things that you can, things that get persisted and stay there, you know, after a server restarts, this screen just shows you information about uh, what's going on right now. So uh, if you clicked on status, you can see some of the information that you saw on the initial screen, uh, like the number of users logged in, zones, rooms, etc. Um, clicking on the zones and rooms section, um, you can see the uh, all the zones that are currently 
working um, that, that are currently uh, in use in the server. And if you click on a zone, you can see the rooms that happen to be in use for that zone. So we have a game zone, and in that game zone, there's a tank game room, and there's users in that room, and there's plugins in that room. So if I click on the users, you could see Insane Gamer is the user that's logged in to that room and currently playing the game. If I click on Plugins, uh, you can see that the Tank Game plugin, which is a server-side plugin, is currently being used for that game. There's a reporting section, and in this section uh, you can view graphs of what's going on in the server in a lot of different ways. Uh, you can choose the graph. Let's see here. There's about looks like there's probably about ten or so different types of graphs. Um, the default one here, the first one that shows, is total incoming bytes. And uh, the server had been running for a few minutes, and then I I uh, initialized a game, and uh, you can just see that that the game is sending uh, data to the the game Swift is sending data to the server. You can change the time frame of, of the graph just through this section over here. You can also view the server logs uh, by clicking on the logs section, uh, the, the logs button over here. And then you can uh, choose various log files to look at. Okay, moving on to the server management tab. Server management tab. Uh, this is one of the most popular tabs. Uh, you, you would end up using this, uh, you will end up using this quite a lot. Uh, you can use this to restart and shut down the server, um, manage your license. Uh, so if you were to purchase uh, an, an upgrade to your license for the server, you would manage it here. Um, some general settings, um, some advanced things like uh, thread settings and uploading uh, a certificate. Um, but the the two most common tabs that you'll use in here are the gateway section and restart and shutdown. So I'll go to the gateway section, show you that one first. Uh, this is the default setting, uh, the, the default number of listeners that are configured with a fresh install of Electro Server. So uh, uh, we have a binary TCP, RTMP, binary HTTP, text TCP, and binary UDP um, transport uh, types that are all being listened for um, in this area. So uh, each one of them has to have a unique port. So the most the most commonly used one is 9899 binary TCP. Almost all of the applications are going to be using this. Uh, RTMP is used for video and flash. Binary HTTP is used uh, for getting around firewalls, um, so this is sort of like a just a failsafe. Um, text TCP is only used by ActionScript 2 clients um, because ActionScript 2 only supports string protocol. And then binary UDP, this is really popular, um, and this is going to be used by uh, pretty much any first-person shooter games. You can add more. Uh, you can edit any of these, and you can add more listeners just using this here. Um, ge under general settings, uh, you'll find uh, some things that you're probably not going to want to mess with too much, but you can browse through here, um, read the help, and, and uh, modify some things. Um, under restart and shutdown, uh, it's pretty obvious. You can just click the button to restart the server or to shut down the server. I'm going to just skip to the next tab now. This user permissions tab uh, is kind of interesting. You can... Uh, uh, Electro server s supports uh, the concept of user types. So uh, by default any user can just log in. But uh, using a login event handler on the server, you can assign a, a type to that user. Um, and you can create those here. So under permission sets, um, this is the default permission set. But you can create a new permission set 
Uh, and in that permission set, you can toggle all these different various things that a user under that permission set could do. So you can create like a class of users that can pretty much do anything or not do anything. Um, and so that's what all this is used for. So when a user logs in, you can assign that permission set to that user, um, and that would be the user's type. Uh, under the ES admin users area here, you can uh, add uh, new administrators that can log in using this administration tool, and you can toggle the permissions that they have. So y you can set up an admin account for somebody and allow that person to only, say, manage extensions. I'm going to move on to the chat filters. <clears throat> So uh, when you're in a chat room, uh, users frequently like to, uh, s some users <laughs> like to abuse things by swearing or flooding. And so we created a flexible, uh, flexible set of filters here for flooding and um, language. Um, so if I show you the flooding filters area, uh, there is a default flooding filter that's already installed, but you can create a new one and manage uh, and uh, configure settings about it. Then when a room is created, you can tell the room which flooding filter to use. And same thing under language filters. Uh, there's a default language filter already installed, and you can modify information about that, or you can create your own brand new language filter. Uh, give it a unique name, and when a room is created, you can specify in that room uh, which language filter you want to use. <clears throat> uh, the language filter would use uh, word lists, so uh, when you create a new language filter, you, you tell it which word lists you want to use. And so you can use the default word list here, you can modify the default word list, or you can create your own. This server extensions tab is is something that we'll devote a whole uh, video tutorial to all by itself. <clears throat> so I'm not going to go into it too much here. But basically, any application, almost any application that you're going to build with the lecture server will have some custom server-side code, uh, which lives in an extension. And you can manage those extensions through this tab. So currently, there's... Um, I, I installed the tank game extension here, and within that extension, there are two plugins, a timestamp plugin and the GMS initializer. And those are just two things that my game needs in order to run. Um, so I'm not going to go into any details about how that's done here since we'll have a, we have a, a, a tutorial plan just for that. And so uh, the last tab is the persistence, persistent rooms tab. By default, um, rooms are not persistent, which means they exist only when users are, are in them. If all users leave that room, then the room will be removed. But you can create a room that doesn't go away called a persistent room. So I'm going to click create here and create a new one. I'll just call it, I'm going to call it my test zone, my test room, and click update to save this information, and then it's not yet published, so I'm just going to click Publish to publish the room. So now it should exist. I'm going to go over to the server monitoring area, click Refresh, and you can see there it is, right there. And then I can unpublish it, come back over here, click Refresh, and you can see it's gone. So that's how that works, and uh, that's it for this video. Uh, and we'll address some of these sections in more detail in future videos.